Welcome to our last day. I'm so happy to see many of you, um, even if the rains have been threatening. And so all of you deserve a special gift, a special treat. You can all get all the PowerPoint presentations. Okay? Including the ones I will not be able to cover. You can download them. Three sets of PowerPoints corresponding to the three days of our sessions. Okay. And yes, feel free to use them to give us seminars in your place, in your school, in your community. As I said, go ahead, use the same jokes I said I gave and... Uh, <laughs> the stories I narrated to you. We've got to get the word out there. Let's make all the teachers teaching for character because there is a crisis. We need to help young people. They need our help. More than science, math, and English and all the other academic subjects, they need answers to the big questions in life, which is what teaching for character is all about. So we're ready. Thank you so much again for all of those who gave very encouraging comments, remarks, a word about the certificates. If you have not received the July 17 certificate, even if you filled up the form, now is the time to send an email to IWantMyCertificate at gmail.com. Please do not send a message in Facebook or to manrentoy at gmail.com. I will not have time to do your certificates. Send an email to I want my certificate at gmail.com. That's one word. Indicate the full name because we cannot know your full name from your email address only. <laughs> indicate your full name as you want it to appear in the certificate and then indicate also the date of the seminar you are asking for a certificate for, whether it's 17, 18, or the one of today. But today's certificate, don't ask for it yet, okay? You will only ask for it if after 24 hours, you do not receive any in your email, in your email, <clears throat> okay? But generally, I think most have received it because my, uh, Gmail blocked the email address, my email address, meaning to say it sent out 400 emails yesterday and last Monday. Who among you got your certificates already? Can I see? Fantastic. So, if you, if you have not received any of the certificates, I saw many wrong spelling in the email address. That can be one reason. Okay? Um, so, that's one reason for sending an email to I want my, my certificate at gmail.com because that means the certificate that was generated did not land in the correct email address. Okay? So, thank you so much for the um, evaluation, for finding time to uh, send some good words, and I hope the strategies that I've shared with you these past two days and then many more today will be very useful for you. Let me just tackle some strategies I didn't get to include last meeting yesterday, which should have been part of yesterday. We talked about the welcoming, Hal Urban shaking hands of all the parties, of all the students as they come inside. Now, if you don't want that kind of welcoming because you have so many students or you prefer not to do that. Here's another way that a teacher made the students feel welcome inside the classroom. She would assign one person every day to do the welcoming for everyone inside the classroom. And here's a video of one. That's another way 
of creating a welcoming classroom, a classroom where you value each other, creating friendship, camaraderie, unity, that here we are one class, we are one family, we are one um, team. And we will have to work hand in hand with each other to achieve our success. Here's another form. And this is a video of a student who left a school because he was being bullied there and this is how the teacher welcomed him to his new classroom, to his new school. And think about what will this kid tell his parents when he goes home on this first day of his school year or his first day in this school. Students are made to choose how they want to welcome him. With a hug, with a handshake, with a high five, with a fist bump. And that kid is going to go home telling his parents about, I mean, the parents are going to ask, so how was your first day in your new school? And you can imagine how excited is going to be telling the parents, thank you so much for putting me in a much better school where I feel welcome, cared for, loved even. We've got to make our classrooms a haven of love because it's so much dark out there. There is so much hatred. They're subjected to a lot of bad news in the news, in the, on television, uh, with all the um, video games, with killings of... Uh, so, sabi ng research sa United States, by the time a kid turns 13 years old, he would have witnessed 18,000 murders. <laughs> Especially because of video games. Or... Teles television series like Game of Thrones, where every episode you can have um, murders, uh, killings, and betrayals. So, the world has become so dark outside. When our students enter our classroom, they have to know, this place, in this classroom, I am safe. And I am loved. And the teachers care for me. Let's move on. Here is a variation of yesterday's check system. You remember the check system? Following the principle, do not stop to discipline. Do not eat up academic time in order to discipline. Here's the stopwatch system, which is actually a reward system. But mind you, so far in the strategies I've given you, while there are a number of rewards, there are also many times I highlighted the important thing of Teacher as model, teacher as example, teacher showing not through words but through their action what we want them to live, the values, the virtues. So here's how it works. So remember, I only have three rules in my classroom, right? They are no unnecessary noise, no unnecessary movement, come prepared for class. So here's how the stopwatch system works. Class, at the, at the start of every month, I will go to my class. Usually, we would have 50-minute periods. And I would usually have those stopwatch, um, yung st uh, clock that does count down. So I go to the classroom at the start of the month telling them, okay, class, you have 50 minutes of reward in my clock. Okay? But remember, every time, 
one of you chooses to break one of my rules, I will have to click the clock, it will start counting down, you start losing seconds from the reward until I stop it. Okay? Otherwise, whatever is left in the, whatever time is left in the clock, by the end of the month, whether it's 40 minutes, 45 minutes, you are going to choose from a menu of reward, class reward, what reward you want. Whether it is, let's say 45 minutes are left, you will have 45 minutes of a video we're going to watch related to the lesson. We're going to have 45 minutes of quiz B, questions coming from the lessons that we had for the month. 45 minutes of free time, 45 minutes of reading. You bring whatever book you want, even comic books, you will be allowed. 45 minutes of um, re, um, free time. You can study for whatever subject, silently, quietly, or you can even work on your projects for 45 minutes. Okay? So this is how it works. I start the class. Yesterday we were talking about subject-verb agreement. If a subject is singular, the verb must be singular. If the subject is plural, and then I notice John and Joey talking. I don't stop teaching. I don't stop lecturing. I don't get angry. I don't get mad. I don't even have to call their attention. I just have to continue lecturing, looking at John and Joey, and calmly picking up the clock. And I click it. It starts counting down. They start losing seconds from the rewards. And I will not click it, stop it, until I see John and Joey showing me that they are like the repentant thieves. Sorry for having chosen to break one of my rules. So, John and Joey will see me clicking the clock. And I would see them. Sorry, sorry. I would stop it. John and Joey just made the class lose five seconds from the reward. But I didn't have to stop lecturing. I continue on lecturing. And I see Joanna standing up without asking permission, which I announced on day one, that is unnecessary movement. I don't stop my lecturing. I don't get angry. I just look at Joanna. She knows that she has bro broken one of my rules. And I calmly pick up the clock and click it. Of course, you know what will happen when I do that? The whole class will look at Joanna and say, Joanna, sit down. The clock, the clock. Ayan. But me, I didn't stop my lecturing. I just calmly clicked the clock. And I got Joanna to sit down back to her chair without even having to stop my lecture, without even having to call her attention. Now, here is a beautiful use of the stopwatch. Have you ever handled a class that happens after PE class? Where you enter the classroom, the whole room is messy, the rows are disarranged, and as I said yesterday, may med just dun. Kaninong brief yun? Bakit nandun? An inefficient teacher, an ineffective teacher, who comes inside the classroom like that, will have to get upset, get mad, shout, and tell them, clean the room, come on. And then you're going to lose a lot of, a lot of minutes even because they are going to take their sweet time. Not me. My class knows that I will not begin my class unless if the rows are arranged, no trash on the floor, and they are standing by their desk. And here's the perfect use of the stopwatch. I enter the classroom. They see me. And I look around. It's not orderly. There are trash on the floor. I don't get mad. I don't shout. I don't bang my hand on the um, blackboard. I don't flicker the lights. I just calmly raise the clock and click it. You know what happens next? You start hearing everyone, Uy, ayusin yung kwato, the clock, the clock. Because they want to get the 50-minute reward or not going below 45 minutes reward. Because I even showed them in my menu of rewards, in the next unit test, 45 minutes open notes. They can open whatever books and notes they want when I give the unit test. But of course, the questions I will make sure cannot be found in the textbook and in the notebook. I will have to make them do analysis, evaluation, uh, demonstration. I will have to make sure 
even if all the books are available for them there, it's not enough for them to pass. They will still have to study. But it works. The clock system works. By the end of the month, I show them how many minutes are left, and then I give the menu of reward to the class officers. Class officers, agree with the rest of the class which reward you want as a class. It works. Reward system, especially if it is for the whole class, works. I, I remind you, this is not the same as the second level of moral development of Kohlberg, I want a reward, because that one is I. Mag-isa ka. It's so selfish, it's for you alone. But this time is, I want my class to get the reward. I want my class to achieve something, to be able to contribute to class unity, class prestige, class honor, as we talked about yesterday. So, it works. The stopwatch system I found to be very useful, especially in getting the whole class to do what you want them to do. You remember what I told you, those strategies will help us get John and Joey to stop talking without you even having to call their attention, without you even having to raise your voice, and without you even having to stop teaching. Don't eat up academic time in order to discipline. Now, let's go to advisory visioning. Many of you are going to be class advisors or have been class advisors. And I believe in the power of the class advisor to create a culture, a mindset, a spirit. That's why minsan yung seminars I give for class advisors is entitled Conjuring the Spirit of the Class. Ayan, yung parang, because that's the job of the class advisor. He is able to conjure anong classing identity itong class ko. Anong klaseng kultura ang mangingibabaw dito sa aking klase? At the start of the school year, class advisors should determine that with a class. Class, how would you like us to be known by the whole school? But inspire them to go for the best. Sasabihin nyo, let's strive to be the best class there is in our school. Let's strive to be known as the kindest class there is. The class with the students who are most courteous and most respectful. When you start giving them a vision of what your class would be, they are more willingly ready to do what you want them to do because they want together as a class to achieve that vision. This, I hope, is the vision for your class this coming school year. Students in your class are going to be very proud to be there. They're very happy to be in your class. In fact, they think that the other classes are kawawa compared to yours. Now, some of you have been class advisors. Iniisip mo, ay oo nga, ganyan yung klasiko. Ganyan yung klasiko. Students from other classes envy your class. They want to be there. They want to be part of that class. Balita namin, ganito yung class nyo. nag -e enchanted kingdom kayo. <laughs> they want to be there. They envy the students inside your class. Parents are so satisfied and confident with you because they know that you are their class advisor and you genuinely care for their children. They are not, they're just too eager to help you and support you. It's not going to be very difficult for you to get them to contribute to the class party, to celebrate your victory in uh, uh, the interims, the Buwan ng Wika celebration. Parent satisfaction comes especially from the realization that you, their class advisor, are a role model for their child. Virtuous, upright, moral, high-impact teacher. Parents and students speak highly of your professionalism. They talk about you over the dinner table in a very positive way. And yes, the parents start talking to their neighbors and to their relatives. Ay, enroll mo dito sa eskwela na ito yung anak mo. Napakagaling ng kanilang class advisor. Napakagaling ng mga teacher. Napakababait ng mga teachers. 
your punctuality, your firmness, but fairness, your kindness, your positive attitude, that you bring out the best in their children. They may have complaints. After all, any school, in any school, there are parents who may have complaints. But your presence, your attitude, your support as a class advisor, all make the problems look trivial and insignificant. Your students support you through and through. The last thing they'd ever want is to upset you, offend you, or be in disfavor with you. They may lose trust in some teachers, in the systems, in the curriculum, but your being their child's class advisor makes up for whatever shortcomings there are. And the parents are still able to say, it's still worthwhile to be in this school. Wala pa rin tatalo. Wala pa rin kasing ganda itong skwela na to. You, as a class advisor, are the spirit of the class, the soul of the team, the magic behind the great class that it is. As we prepare for a new school year, this is what we want to be able to achieve. This is what we look forward to. We excitedly look forward to a new school year because we are given another opportunity, a new opportunity to form a class that has its own culture stemming from values, a spirit, a way of doing things, level six thinkers, a class of level six thinkers who will do good things not because they're avoiding a punishment, not because they want a reward, not because they just want to please somebody, not just because they're following rules, but because they have a personal code of behavior and they follow it. And we're going to give them that personal code of behavior from day one of the school year. There may be misunderstandings among the students every now and then, but they are ready to forgive for the sake of class unity. This is the vision. This is the vision regardless of how we may have thought last year or the last year before the pandemic started or 10 years ago. It doesn't matter. The beautiful thing about teaching is every year we are given a reboot, a new start, a new beginning regardless of how things went the previous years. This year, I'm going to commit myself. I'm going to be the best teacher I can possibly be regardless of how I may not have done as well in the past. That's the beauty of teaching every year. It's a fresh new start. We are given opportunity to begin again and really teach, making an impact in the lives of our students. That should give you a bit of encouragement. Oh, oh I'm, I, I'm excited. I'm excited to begin a new school year. Now, here's a problem. <laughs> we are dealing with the digital natives, with a digital lifestyle that, according to researchers, is the most damaging in the history of humanity. I mean, this kind of digital lifestyle where they are manipulated by social media, by the environment, by movies, by teleseries and telenovelas, all these are conniving to make our students today selfish, self-centered, vain. I mean, the, um, that's according to research. Empathy, according to them, is at an all-time low. And vanity and pride at an all-time high. Even without the research, just by observing the lifestyle of the young people today, ay talagang sasabihin, oo nga, bakit pinipicturan yung kanyang Starbucks at pinapa-announce sa buong mundo, nandito ako sa Starbucks? Kayo, nasaan? Nescafe inom nyo? Yung parang, the, the message they send out is, uy, tingnan nyo ako, I'm, I'm having a, I mean, why do they, in fact, have to take a picture? That, that's the mindset of many young people, ano? Kailangan picturean muna yung, ano, yung egg pie bago nila kainin. Kailangan i-post muna sa Twitter, sa Instagram, o kaya um, sa Facebook. Now, you and I are not exempt. We too 
get affected by this digital lifestyle. We too spend a lot of time looking down on the screen rather than looking people straight in the eyes when we're talking. It's something parents should be asking themselves, in fact, frequently. Are you parents able to put down your phone so that you really have a conversation at home? Are we able to refrain from answering a text message or a phone call during the dining table time? When we are in the church, in the chapel, in the uh, service, those things are also affecting us. The digital lifestyle are also affect the digital lifestyle is also affecting us in a negative way. So here is what experts say. We all need a bit of digital detoxification. Number one, let's do a bit of digital detoxification because we too need it. And then we need to teach kids this. A bit of detoxification because the digital the onslaught, the onslaught of digital lifestyle is creating a big havoc in the mindset, in the attitude, in the formation, in the character, the, at the behavior of young people. Here's number one. Seven tips I can give you. Number one, turn off notifications. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram should not be the one telling you, Uy, bumalik ka, may nag-like ng post mo. Because that's what notifications are all about. Sasabihin sa you, uy, balik ka sa Facebook. May nag-share ng post mo. Your friend commented. Your friends liked it. It's like you are being controlled by Facebook, by Twitter, by Instagram. Turn it off. You should be the one to determine when you will go online. Not Facebook, not Twitter, not Instagram. Let us not allow ourselves to be enslaved. I mean, I have to admit I'm a heavy user of social media because that's the only way I can market my seminars, for example, or be able to reach out to our friends from Davao who are here with us today, to Gigarao, um, Cebu. It's only to do social media, media that I'm able to sh um, share with them the information about our hybrid seminars these days. But Facebook, Twitter, Instagram should not be the ones controlling us. Here's number two tip. Have you ever noticed sometimes, pag meron kang nakikitang picture ng kapitbahay mo at ang 128 pictures ng baby niya, naiinis ka na? Yung parang, you get irritated, you get upset. Yan. O kaya, yung kapitbahay mo na lahat ng posts niya na political are opposed to yours and you get upset, you have bad vibes, you get bad vibes, you, you get irritated. Suggestion. Tip number two, delete them. <laughs> they will not even know that you deleted them. Or, in fact, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram even gives you a lot of opportunity, a lot of choices now. You don't have to delete them. You don't have to unfriend them. You don't have to block them. You can also just mute them. You can just also take a rest, take a break, or unfollow para hindi lalabas yung uh, posts nila sa wall mo. Or uh, you're a member of a group chat na para bang every time you go there, ang bigat ng pakiramdam mo kasi parang buong mundo nasa balikat mo bigla. Leave the group. Ayan, man rin to, left the group. Ha? Very dramatic pa, no? Papansin ba nila? I mean, anything that can remove bad vibes from you, do it. It will do you a lot of good. Here's the third. My dear fellow teachers, the airplane mode is not only for the airplane. It's also for dinner time. It's also for prayer time. It's also for family time. It's very unfortunate. Minsan kakain ka sa restaurant, ano? tapos sa kabilang table, buong pamilya. Nag-uusap ba sila? Ay hindi, each one has his own gadget. Eh, ba't pa kayo lumabas kumain? Eh, hindi naman pa kayo, hindi pa. I mean, the dining is supposed to be a social activity where we update each other. In fact, there is a group in the United States pushing family dinner. Please, bring back family dinner. Believe it or not, marami akong studyante. 
I did this survey before. Do you get to a family time, family dinner time? I sir, weekends lang. Kasi during weekdays, uh, late umuwi ang tatay ko, tapos kami kailangan mag-aral, tapos by the time he arrives, kailangan matulog na kami, tapos aalis ako, tulog pa sila. We don't even get to take breakfast together. So that group is just championing families. Ibalik ang dinner time. Because that is where the young people are supposed to be learning practically all the values. I mean, look back to your childhood days. Dun sa dinner time natin natutunan. Dun tayo kinorek ng tatay natin about being kind, being courteous, about not uh, answering back, about not being uh, unkind and impolite in the way we talk. And chances are, dun din tayo pinagalitan when we ever uttered a bad word or a foul language. Who now is going to check them if there is no dinner time, family time? Number four, give your gadget, whether it's the cell phone or the tablet or even the laptop or the computer, a bit of rest. I mean, to tell yourself on Friday, I will not even open Facebook the whole day. Ayan, yung ganyan, ano? Challenge yourself just to prove to yourself that, you see, I am not enslaved by technology. I am not a slave of social media. I can determine that I will not even turn on the gadget or whatever. Otherwise, young kids today, paggising nila, yun kagad ang hahanapin. And here's the unfortunate thing. Some parents will say, patahimikin mo nga yung bata, bigay mo na yung ano, tablet para tumahimik na. <laughs> naging, naging new nanny. Dati ang nani was the television. Sige na nga, panood mo ng cartoons dyan para tumahimik at wag nang umiyak. Ngayon, ibigay mo ang, ano, ang tablet. Well, we need a bit of rest. Number five, every now and then, to develop a certain laser focus attitude when we go to the internet. Why are you going to the internet? Ah, kasi kailangan kong makuha itong telephone number nitong company. Okay, laser focus. Go, get the phone number, and then out. Kasi wala na eh. Otherwise, what happened many times, what happens many times is, you go. Wala kang specific uh, objective. So, you check, ah, ano bang result ng NBA, kagabi, NBA.com. Ay, ano na nga ba ang latest sa It Bulaga, It Bulaga at It's Showtime uh, Battle. Uh, ay, ano, ano na naman tong Maharlika Fund na pinirmahang kahapon. Ay, Ano nga ba to? Before you know it, two hours has passed. Two hours have passed. And I know some teachers who are like that. Ah, Mr. Rentoy, wala akong problema. I only use the Facebook uh, para lang mga antukin sa gabi. So I go to bed and then I scroll. Here's what the research says. The blue screen, the blue light coming from the screen sends a signal to the brain that it is, day, it is still daylight. It is still daylight. So please don't ever think that by doing that, scrolling, scrolling, liking here, liking there, aantukin kayo. Chances are you will even have a harder time sleeping. Have you ever noticed why more and more young people complain about uh, not being able to sleep in the evening? Uh, anong sakit dun sa ta anong tawag dun? Insomnia? Parang gusto mong batok insomnia. Pikit mo mata mo kasi. Makakatingnan mo makakatulog ka. <laughs> Anong insomnia, insomnia? Wala kang insomnia. Hindi ka talaga lang natutulog. Uh, turn off the gadget and then close your eyes. Tingnan mo makakatulog ka. Th that's the lifestyle of the young people today. It has become so normal for them to be sleeping very late or early in the morning already. Tapos papasok sa Filipino class mo, dun siya babawi ng kulang sa tulog. <laughs> Ngayon, problema pa natin. Kailangan pa tayong ano, mag-motivate, magpatawa. Kailangan pa tayong maging exciting. Kailangan pa tayong maging entertaining. Kasi kung hindi, tutulugan tayo. Ay, tika muna. Let's go to the root of the problem. Digital lifestyle. Let's teach them digital detoxification. Here's a sixth one. We have to encourage these young people. Uy, deepen connection. I mean, 
real connection, not the virtual connection in real life. Because really, in real life, that's where happiness, real happiness happens. And then, every now and then, may ini sila, no? Kasi bakit biglang humina ang Wi-Fi? Uy, embrace it. That downtime maybe is an opportunity for you to get you back to your senses. There's more to life than just the virtual reality, the virtual friends, and the... Young people are experts in technology, right? But they are experts in technology for entertainment, to entertain themselves. What we need to do is to teach them how to make use of technology for productivity, real productivity. That's one challenge we have as educators because um, the best things in life happen in real life, not online. Let's go to, uh, this is second set of strategies this time from Hal Urban, the author. I mentioned to you uh, Hal Urban on the first day. 20 things good teachers do. Lessons from the classroom. And I, I taught you uh, two things already from Hal Urban. The shaking hands to welcome students, and then the class atmosphere. The negative here, the positive here, they end up in the poster, that's Hal Urban. Here are Hal Urban's The Daily Four. Consciously, systematically, methodically, deliberately, he tries to make sure he is able to do all these four things in his period, every period. Number one, share a good news. Okay, before we start the class, I'll give you one minute. Get a partner, share a good news with that partner. Just one minute. Or what he would do is, okay, before we start the class, one minute. Anyone wants to share a good news? Anyone wants to share? Of course, in the beginning, the students had um, felt uneasy, but because the class started becoming like one family, there came a point when, according to Hal Urban, students started sharing even intimate things. Sir, I'd like to share. My dad abandoned us last, uh, last year, but he came back home. And then you feel everyone's sympathy for the, I mean, not sympathy, but they feel the joy, the joy of suddenly having dad, dad back home. I mean, that's the kind of culture, that's the kind of um, atmosphere that you create. Number two, tell about someone or something you're grateful for. Sabi ng research, gratitude is one of the most crucial uh, elements or virtues we need to foster today among the young people. Gratitude, sense of gratitude, is one sure way of combating depression. I mean, depression happens when you think everything is zero, negative, bad. Ay, teka muna. Not everything is bad. You woke up today, you're alive. We're alive. Your parents are still there. So for them to start counting their blessings is one perfect way of combating uh, mental health problems, depression, or feeling like they are cornered and there is no way out except suicide. I mean, uh, the, um, we've got to make them see that uy, life, life is still good. Life is still good. Especially because you're young, you're a teenager, you still have 50 years 70 years down the line, ang dami pang magagawa sa buhay. Ang dami mo pang magagawa. This is the kind of a sense of gratitude that we have to um, make ingrain among the teenagers so that they look forward to a better tomorrow in spite of how dark things may be at the present. Number three, affirm someone in class. This is part of what we um, reinforcing Morals. You remember when you say, John, I saw you picking up trash. Good job. That's uh, initiative. Even if I didn't tell you. Joanna, you lent a ball pen to you. Good job. That's kindness. You're affirming. And in fact, if you notice, I am not really affirming John or Joanna. I am affirming what they did. Praise the action, not just the person. 
so that the others will see, I also want to be able to do that, to be kind, to have initiative, etc. And then the number four, make us laugh, he tells them, okay, next meeting, to start the class, I will give two minutes, prepare a wholesome joke, okay? And then the next, the next time you meet them, okay, who wants to share a joke? When the class laughs together, you are forming a bond that becomes stronger of friendship, of that they feel at home, they feel happy to be there. So, Hal Urban would do this as a, the daily for systematically, deliberately, he would make it a point to insert any of these. Uh, somebody commented in the um, yung sa evaluation, in fact, hindi niya ako binigyan ng excellent, ng very good. Ay, talagang good lang. Oh. Ang, ang sabi niya, the strategies are too good to be true. Ayun, yan yung comment niya. Parang too good to be true. Hindi ko alam kung isipin ko, hey, thank you very much. That means my, my strategies are spectacular. But they're not too good to be true that they cannot be done because all, the, all that I've shared with you, I mean not all, but I would say 90% of what I've shared with you, I've actually done inside the classroom. They're doable. They look too good to be true, but they are doable. That's the idea. And here's what I need to say. Teachers, I may have shared with you 100 strategies, and I'm not telling you, do them. In fact, if you don't want to do any of them, no problem. But the important message is, there are strategies available out there to make our classes a real good class, raising young people to be good, men and women, men and women of character. Discover them. If you don't like any of these uh, strategies, but you have a way of discovering many others, go ahead, please go ahead. But we cannot remain the same teaching um, in the same way as we may have done before, covering the curriculum, finishing the textbooks, and even worse, having students who resent us because we shout, we scream, we yell, etc. If you have other ways of making the students do what you want them to do without you having to resort to shouting, screaming, yelling, go ahead, do those strategies, discover those strategies. You don't have to follow any of, the, of these that I am sharing with you. But the principle that I've got to do things better. Kasi ibang klase na ang mga bata ngayon. The power of words. In fact, after uh, Hal Urban wrote the lessons from the classroom, 20 Things Good Teachers Do, one of his other books is The Power of Words. Words are very powerful. And although it's not part of the strategies I'm going to share with you, but he talks in that book, Lessons from the Classroom, about the dirty 30. 30 things that poison the air, like put down, teasing, racism, 30 things. And instead, he said, we have to replace them with the thoughtful 30. One of them is gratitude. One of them is please, and thank you, sorry. 30 words to brighten up the environment, the atmosphere, and clear the air of those dirty 30. Let's move on. Dr. Thomas Licona, I mentioned to you um, on the first day, acknowledged as the grandfather of character formation thanks to his very important book entitled um, Character Matters or Educating for Character. And one of the books I shared with um, you uh, here yesterday was uh, Smart and Good High School where he put together strategies uh, used by smart and good high schools in the United States. So, let's talk about his bully prevention program. He came up with a scientific, most um, useful, effective way, most effective, one of the most effective ways of really preventing bullying, squashing bullying, and bully-proofing your school which we cannot talk about every single one of them because the, by itself, this is a three-hour lecture I usually give to schools when they ask for how can we address the bullying that happens here. 
But I want to highlight again the teacher as caregiver, model, and mentor. You want to squash bullying? Make sure the teachers themselves are the model of kindness, of caring, of welcoming. When the teacher has problem with classroom management, he shouts, he screams, he yells, he hurts the students. You can be sure bullying is also happening among the students. So, that's one of the most important things. And then, what he is saying really is, here's the big idea about that will with 12 points. A high-quality, comprehensive approach to character education is the most effective way to develop caring classrooms and schools and thereby reducing or stopping bullying. It has to be comprehensive, high-quality. Hindi nadadaan lang yan sa posters. Because some schools, uy, may bullying sa eskwelahan, anong gagawin natin? Bili tayo sa national bookstore nung mga uh, bullies not allowed here. Bili tayo ng mga posters. Okay, posters are nice, but that's not high quality, that's not comprehensive, and that's not even many times effective. I mean, students will not stop bullying simply because merong kang poster doon. It will have to come from all those 12 Sorry, those 12 points that you see there. And besides, there must be activities inside the classroom as well as beyond the classroom. And you've got to get the parents, the community to take part in the campaign. And that is how you're going to create a culture of excellence and ethics. So, we answer the question, how then do we stop bullying how then do we make our campus um, kind and caring, a kindness zone? It has to be intentional. Teachers will have to sit down one day and say, let us make sure bullying doesn't happen in our school. Let's put certain things in place intentionally. Hindi yan, oy, by chance, by accident, walang bullying. Uh, of course not. In fact, what we discover is, pag ang mga teachers nagsasabing, Mr. Antoy, bullying is part of their, ano, pro yung alam mo, lahat naman tayo dumadaan dyan eh. When teachers say that, you can be sure there is bullying happening there. <laughs> I mean, that's a, a, an assurance to you na talagang may bullying na nangyayari. But if teachers sit down and say, let us work together intentionally making our school a kindness zone, Bully, pre, uh, bully proof, then you stand a better chance. And it has to involve every phase of school and classroom life. Even in the playground, you are interested to make sure there is no bullying happening. Even in the cafeteria, you want to make sure bullying does not happen. Even in the swimming pool, even in all phases of the campus and of school life. Now, Sabi ng research, you want to succeed in this? Three secrets to success in creating a kind and caring school, kind and caring classroom, a school that is bullyproof, staff involvement, parents involvement, students involvement. Our interest now is, paano natin i-involve ang ladies selling in the cafeteria? The security guards, the maintenance men, the people in the bookstore. Paano natin sila i-involve? Here's how you involve them. Create a touchstone. A touchstone or a way or a vision or core values. Let us make sure our school is guided by core values. So, let us involve everyone, including the non-academic staff. What is a touchstone? This is from Dr. Thomas Licona. Develop a school touchstone or a way. Better yet, if it is crafted, written, drafted by students, teachers, non-academic staff, and even the parents. Now, if you already have it in place, most likely your school already has. 
the mission, vision, core values. What is important is to get everyone on board and make everyone agree that yes, we believe this is what the school is all about. This is what the school stands for and we comply with them. So, here's an example. A school in the United States called Northridge. They drafted this and this is their way. At Northridge School, we pursue excellence in scholarship and character. We celebrate and honor each other by being respectful, honest, kind, and fair. We give our best inside and outside the classroom. This is who we are, even when no one is watching. And all staff, all the um, non-teaching staff are made aware of this because you will see it in the posters. Everyone is given a um, small sticker or... Um, you know, a printed item that they can post on their table. They are reminded about this is what we do here. This is what we believe in. This is how we are here. Here's another touchstone. Well, the high school counselor in this school simply said, we have a Roosevelt way. It's just the way that students are expected to act and a way that they are expected not to act. And we are given orientation about it. The parents are given orientation about it. They receive a newsletter or in an email. They sign at the start of the school year. They sign when they enroll their kids that, by the way, this is how we do things here. So, here are four things to make sure we put in place if we are going to succeed in this touchstone. Number one, visibility. It's got to be all over campus. You enter a classroom, it's written there. It's in a poster. The students even probably raise their right hand and recite, this is how we do things here. We are given orientation. We are given a reminder. When the um, officers give a speech, they make sure to touch on the touchstone, the vision, the core values, whatever it is. Number two, you want it to succeed? Incorporate it, integrate it into academics. English teachers, when they study literature, they try to bring in the lessons about the um, touchstone. Asking like, if that character is a student in this school, do you think he is going to be an ideal student? You are reminding them about what we stand for as a school you're reminding them what it, what it means to be a student of this school. Even in the way we discipline, we bring in the core values, the touchstone. Rather than just punishing, we say, John, you know why we are upset about what you did, no? Because that goes contrary to our core values. What you did is right smack against what we stand for as a school. So that's how we discipline. We bring in the core values rather than simply detained, suspended, expelled, dropped from. We are not just going around punishing. We are making them adhere to our core values. And then make sure that the new students are given proper orientation. Every student that comes to our, class, to our school is given an orientation, by the way, this is how we do things here in our school. This is what we do. This is what we believe in. These are our core values. For teachers, the same. There should be talks about our way, our um, touchstone, our core values. Often, frequently, not just during orientation, but even every month, or every opportunity the officers have of addressing the body, they make sure they point to the touchstone. This is one of the reasons that qualified Holy Angel University in Pampanga as the, uh, the first university to be uh, declared a school of character. They just stuck to what has always been there as their motto from the very beginning. Since its foundation, decades ago. They just brought it back because it's principle number one in the 11 principles of schools of school of character. 
Okay, let's go to the next. Visibility, even with exaggeration, if we are to create a kind and caring campus, then it's got to be so obvious, so visible, you cannot miss it wherever you go, enter any classroom, go to any corridor, look at any bulletin board, everything speaks of kindness. <clears throat> okay, sure, <clears throat> this is elementary, but high school students surely can come up with their own brand of decorations, posters, reminders, but you enter the campus and you cannot miss it. Anyone who leaves the campus, when they talk to their friends about, what can you say about that school? Ay, grabe. It's a kindness zone. <laughs> okay. Let's go to the second secret. You will succeed in being able to bullyproof your school, in being able to squash bullying and create a kind and caring campus if, number one, I mentioned already, involve the staff. Number two, involve the students. Students have to be part of creating that kind of culture, that kind of atmosphere. How do you do that? Do class meetings. I attended one um, conference in Washington, D.C. before. Three days. So many speakers, so many bro breakout sessions. And then on the last day, the speaker, the main the plenary speaker said, you know, if there is only one strategy you're going to bring home, if you will only choose one, let it be this one. Hold class meetings where you give students a voice, a choice, and active participation in owning whatever you want the school to become. They have to own it too. And you can only do that through class meetings. <clears throat> so, you have to find ways that you can get students to speak up during class meetings. And here, I mean, just to show you how you will never run out of things to meet about, here are 20 types of class meetings that you can do. Even subject teachers. You're not a class advisor, but you're the math teacher. Napansin mo, parang ang daming bumabagsak. Dahil sa low quizzes, you need a class meeting. And you're going to meet with a cl class. Let's discuss. There seems to be a problem. Why are many people doing poorly? When you do that, you're giving them a voice. They will now start talking. And not only that, you are effectively passing on the problem to them. You should not be the only one solving problems. Problema nila yun eh. Siguro hindi sila nag-aaral. Siguro hindi nila sineseryoso. Siguro they just hate math. I mean, there are students who are like that. They just dislike numbers. So, they have to own the problem and they have to find a solution. That's the fruit of a class meeting. Here are 20 types of class meetings where you can get everyone talking, contributing, even if they may never have spoken up before or they are not into talking. Good news meeting. That's a good way of getting students to speak up. Any good news that we can talk about that happened to you this week, whether it's about academics or whether uh, it's about uh, the interims or whatever. Good news. Circle whip. And I'm going to show you in a while. What is a circle whip? Circle whip is you form them into a circle or if there is no space, you imagine a circle, but you get everybody to contribute something. Appreciation time, compliment time, goal setting meeting. Here is a um, sample of circle whip. You're going to write on the board, okay class, I'm going to write unfinished statements on the board. You choose one that you will finish and everyone will be given the chance to speak up. Or you can simply say, for today in our meeting, you all will be given the chance to complete the first statement. Something I like about this class. And you get everybody to contribute. No put-downs, no objections, 
no um, no saying no that's not true no let everyone be allowed to say whatever they want or something i think would make our class better or a decision i think we should make i'm wondering why etc when you give every student the opportunity to complete any of this statement you are hearing them you are giving them a voice and effectively problems will come up concerns will come up you will know then what do we need to discuss to look for solutions six rule setting meeting okay this is the rule about our uh, meetings that shouldn't take so long you just have to um, give for example criteria like everyone should be allowed to say anything no one should contradict whatever somebody says no teasing no making fun of whatever anybody says we're here to listen everyone should li that's rule setting meeting rule evaluating maybe along the way you discover you know people take it uh, take things against each other uh, outside of the meeting so you will have to evaluate we need to put something else in the rules for our meeting so that something like that doesn't happen stage setting meeting we have to set the stage for whether it is uh, a performance we have to make or we have to meet about our um, contest piece for your setting the stage for something feedback and evaluation reflections on learning what are the most important things you learned this week in any subject anyone wants to share or everyone should uh, share the most important thing for you that you learn in any of the subjects and then you get everybody this is very important when you give students a voice you effectively make them share as well the ownership of whatever problems there may be inside the classroom student presentation problem solving meeting academic issues classroom improvement meeting a follow-up meeting on something we discussed earlier planning meeting concept meeting sticky situations like there is something uneasy a situation that makes people uneasy about about a classmate about a teacher let's meet about it class i heard there is like a growing dislike for uh, one of your teachers can we discuss it how can we solve it what can we do do we need to talk to the principal it's a sticky situation but we need to discuss it suggestion box class business box meeting on meetings in other words what i'm simply pointing out here is when we say class meetings there are so many things you can do to give students a voice and it's a fantastic way of getting them to own the problem one of these meetings may be precisely about bullying so i hear that there is a lot of teasing and bullying or cyber bullying that is happening what can we do as a class what should we do to put a stop to it that is very important let's go freshmen senior bonding remember we're trying to create a kind and caring campus bully proofing our school making everybody feeling safe inside our campus well one of those strategies i saw very very useful and we would do it in southridge and in northfield every year now, during that time we still had the fourth year first year high school set up the fourth year and the first year today it will have to be the grade 10 and the grade 7 spending one whole day bonding playing basketball playing futsal taking lunch together and then after lunch they proceed to the auditorium the first year students do some performances the fourth year students do some performances you know what happens next after that day the young students first year are excited to go to the school because they have older kuyas that they can run to the school becomes a school that is caring and kind and there is bonding there is friendship there is camaraderie you are not afraid of being bullied there are older students you can run to for help it works it's very useful 
Now, something I think I discussed with you on day one, I always mobilize the student council. The student council will be uh, dressed in gala attire and they will be in charge of welcoming the whole school as students come. And they are especially on the lookout for new students because they will help them look for their classroom. It's their first time to come. So the older students, the student councils, the student leaders, or even the whole fourth year, the whole grade 12 will be mobilized to make sure the whole first day is a very welcoming atmosphere that the students will see. Older students, okay, um, there's another form of um, a variation of that. Older students are assigned as mentors to all freshmen. The school trains the mentors and mentors and their freshmen meet weekly. This is like the body system, older students being paired with the younger ones. And yes, we can also be talking about college students mentoring the freshmen coming in or the grade 10, grade 12 students mentoring or being buddies of lower grade students. Now, that's body system, one is to one. But there is also body classes system where you have an older class being paired, partnered with a lower grade class. And the same, once a week, they can be made to take lunch together or take recess together. And the young kids can ask advice from the older kids about how to deal with this teacher. What do we do with this kind of teacher who is very demanding? And the older ones will say, Alam mo, ganyan talaga si ma'am, pero um, mataas magbigay ng grades yan. <laughs> or um, very understanding. Huwag kayo matakot. So, you have a whole class acting as a buddy to a younger class. I love a school where classes support each other. They, uh, the older ones look at the younger uh, ones as their younger kids, younger brothers that they are responsible for. The buddy classes get together weekly or bi-weekly. The older kids read to their little buddies for the lower, really the lower grades help them with their schoolwork, do a special project together, and so on. Okay, here's another strategy to create a kind, caring, bullyproof campus. Celebrate Kindness Week. And make students, this is especially exciting for the lower grades, grade 6 down, or why not? Even high school students are actually capable of doing this celebrating kindness challenge. One week, everyone will be given this passport. The passport is nothing else but a list of kind acts. Let's zoom in. Many of them don't cost a single centavo. Smiling at 25 people doesn't cost a single centavo. Slipping a nice note in your friend's backpack, complimenting five people, picking up 10 pieces of trash on campus, making a new friend, telling a joke and make someone laugh, etc., etc. Let's zoom in to the other side, the lower side. Helping a younger student, giving a kind handshake to greet a classmate, recycle your trash. So every, all students would have a copy of this, like a passport. And every time they're able to complete one or to do one, they tick it off. And the challenge is, by the end of the week, you should challenge yourself to be able to do all of them. Have you started imagining the, how the campus looks like, looks like that week with students running around trying to give those 25 smiles, the lending on hand, uh, picking up trash? For one week, you're celebrating kindness. And they love a challenge. And then, those who are able to complete the list, they can give it to the class advisor, and the class advisor will make sure they receive a one-fourth page certificate that they have completed the challenge, or that the principal, the, at the end of the week, will announce 
these students completed the challenge and did all, all those that are in the list. I love a campus where students are scampering around to do as many kind acts. That changes the atmosphere and that changes the mindset, attitude, behavior of students thinking that I'm in a kind and caring campus. Here we do not allow bullying. Not only do we not allow bullying, we will not allow anyone to be bullied. We are safe. It's a bullyproof campus. Number 10, because three things for success, staff involvement, students involvement, and we just covered a number of strategies under that. And here's the third secret to bullyproofing a school, to making our campus kind and caring. Involve the parents. Make the parents aware that you are championing kindness that you want your school to be a kind and caring place. Because that's how, according to um, Dr. Thomas Licona, we are able to achieve a bullyproof campus. Here's the first thing. Make sure you let the parents know. Because they are the first and foremost, most important, Character educator. Sabi nila, dapat, oh, bago pa pumasok ang isang bata sa skwelahan, ay natutunan niya na dapat sa bahay. Ang, good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Thank you. Please, sorry. Bago pa pumasok ng classroom, dapat tinuro na ng mga magulang. The parents are the primary educators, character educators of the children. But is that what we're seeing? Unfortunately, sometimes you see a kid entering your classroom and he doesn't know how to be courteous, how to be kind. So, we need to step in, but don't fail in making the parents know that you expect them to be the primary educators of their children, the primary character educators of their children. I don't know how you're going to do that. Newsletter, email, uh, orientation, but find a way of communicating with the parents from the very beginning that parents, ha, hindi kayo nandito, dinideposito nyo lang yung anak ninyo, tapos kami nang bahala. Kasi may mga ganyang parents, ano? Abay, nagbayad kami ng tuition, bahala ka na, salbahe yung anak ko, kayo nang bahala dyan. Wala akong kinalaman dyan, demonyo yan. I, I mean, we cannot allow parents to have that mindset na ang tingin nila sa eskwelahan is uh, rehabilitation center. I mean, rehab center. <laughs> Tapos kayong mag-aayos ng problema ng bata? Uh, hindi. Tika muna. Parents, kayo. Our firm believe that you are the primary educators, especially character educators. Our job is just to reinforce what the parents are supposed to, supposed to be teaching at home. So, if you don't have that kind of parent orientation seminar in the beginning of the school year, if you have not given any orientation to your parents, please, it's not too late, schedule it. Schedule one orientation for the parents to make them know, to communicate with them that you, we, we expect you to partner with us. We're just here to collaborate with you. You're the ones who should be doing this. Expect parents to participate. Okay? Get the program to the parents, whatever it is that you have. You have um, kindness campaign, kindness challenge week. Make sure the parents are aware of that. And even challenge them. Can you also uh, do some kind of challenge at home? Making your son, your daughter do acts of kindness? I love that school, Morningstar Montessori School, that I talked to you about. The first school of character in the Philippines. When I entered every classroom, parang may ano yung crepe paper, tapos maraming mga nakasabit yung puno na yabong na yabong, hitik na hitik sa bunga, na may mga nakasulat dun sa papel na nakapaligid sa puno. Sabi ko, ano yan? Ah, sir, here we have acts of kindness campaign whole year round. Every time a student does a kind act at home, 
he will ask his parents to sign a small piece of paper tapos ikakabit niya yan dyan. So that you enter the classroom and you see kung gano karami or gano kakonte ang kindness, acts of kindness that the students have done at home. And it encourages them. Pag nakita nila, uy, parang ano ba to? Come on, do acts of kindness. And it's not just a matter of getting parents to sign a piece of paper. Of course, they are trained to be honest, upright, not cheating, not resorting to lying, just to have a yabong na yabong na ano, um, flourishing tree. Tapos, I, in one seminar, I talked about doing um, challenge, act of uh, kindness, week challenge. Pagpunta ko dun sa skwelahan, I said, dito meron kaming 100 days of kindness. <laughs> Not just one week, they did it 100 days. And then, unexpectedly, yung 100 days, without them planning it, landed or ended with February 14. Nagulat pati sila. Uy, 100 days would end on February. Not that they planned it. They just said, let's have 100 days encouraging students to do a lot of uh, acts of kindness. So, Get the parents. Something about cyberbullying. Hindi naman natin problema yun eh. Nangyayari yun sa bahay. Kasi dito sa eskwelahan, kaya mo namang i-monitor yung kanilang computer use, di ba? So this thing of cyberbullying, it happens at home. The parents have to be involved. Kasi sila ang nandun sa bahay that can supervise and check what my son, what my daughter is doing in the internet. So, we've got the parents, we've got to get the parents involved and participating in this one. Or every now and then, it's good to think about uh, assignments that will involve the parents. Like English teachers, literature teachers, you will ask the student, write, and an, um, this is your homework. Ask your parents to share with you the hero in their life, ask them why. And then you yourself, you will tell them who your hero is in your life, and then you share answers with them, etc. You compare. Every now and then, to give assignments that will make the students involve the parents in discussion of character. Okay. For education to be effective, it must be personal. Sabi natin yun nung when we were discussing Hal Urban strategy. Well, this is one strategy of a teacher to make his or her teaching really personal. He wants, she wants the students to know him or to know her. I mean, don't remain a mystery for your students they will be more willingly open to you if you also show them that you are open to them. That they know things about you, that you actually have, um, you're married, you have kids, that you are fond of um, um, taking care of dogs or cats. I mean, who are you as a teacher? You remember we were talking about that. So, more and more, we've got to get the students know us as we also are interested in getting to know them. So, this teacher would have a teacher's corner with pictures of, his fam of her family and dog and like that. And then, every student is assigned to come to the teacher, spend 10 minutes telling the teacher about himself or herself, showing the family album or whatever it is about myself because for education to be effective it must be personal we've got to go out of academic time I mean not everything has got to be just about our subject matter that's why it's good to look into do we have these qualities if I'm to be a role model, if I'm, supposed to, if I'm supposed to be someone my students will look up to, then I have to ask myself questions like this. Do I warmly greet each one of them? 
do I seek other opportunities to connect with each student? Am I well prepared for class on time? Do I model patience and courtesy even under stress? Do I treat all students impartially? And do I challenge all of them to do their best work? All these will make us realize how much of a model we are, how much of a role model we are, or how much work we still need to put in place so that we really truly become a role model for our students. Here's another strategy. Anonymous compliments. Remember, we played the compliments game the other day. Two minutes before dismissal. Anyone saw um, um, a kind deed today that you want to compliment? Anyone saw something that can be complimented? This one now is anonymous. You have a box. Each student draws a name of a classmate. And yes, this can even be done professionally. I mean, even among teachers, we can do this as an activity. That at the start of the week, you have a name among the people in the class that you have to write a compliment for or about. By the, week, by the week's end, the student writes an anonymous compliment about that person on a strip of paper. Shows it to the teacher because the teacher has to make sure that it really is a compliment. It is not a negative thing, that it is worthwhile. And then puts it in the compliment box. Remember, every single one of them has to write about another person. So at the end of the week, everyone will have a compliment. On Friday, the teacher will post all the compliments on the bulletin board. And you can imagine the students' excitement looking for their name and the compliment written about them. Compliments work. Again, that goes with the video I showed you earlier. Words are powerful. They're very powerful. And some of these students, that might be the only compliment they will hear for the week. <laughs> and that might be the only thing that will keep them going in spite of the toughness of life, the difficulties of life. 14. Peer, peers affirming peers. At the end of each day, you ask the class, anyone saw kindness today? And anyone can raise his hand. Rather than saying, um, um, how was the day? Well, no, you're asking for something specific. Anyone saw kindness? Anyone saw respect? Anyone saw determination? And as people raise their hand and say, I saw John showing respect for the teacher. That's affirming. Peer affirming peers. Who saw sharing. While it's given as an example of a grade 3 teacher, I mean, it's no, not only grade 3 that can do that. Different levels can do that. We talked about this somehow when we discussed Hal Urban. We have to teach manners and the golden rule. Well, we have to teach our students to be courteous. I teach my kids to greet and thank the cafeteria workers. The cafeteria staff say that they always know when my, when my kids, when my students are coming to do. My students have a very high level of self-respect because of the respect that they show to other people. It's a good strategy to encourage students, young kids especially. Nowadays, it's not only kids. In fact, we need to remind high school students, please, don't forget your courtesy. Don't forget to say thank you. Don't forget to say please. Okay. Then we go to Compact for Excellence. In the beginning of the school year, you can ask your students, what are our core values? Let's agree on it as a class. And then once you have the core values, you can make them draft a pledge, a promise, a compact that we are going to live by this. You can formulate it in a way that they can actually raise their right hand at the start of every day 
and make that pledge, the compact for excellence. Here's another way of doing it. Put students in groups of four. Give each, each group a large sheet of paper and marker. Write down two rules that will help us do our best work and two rules that will help us treat others with respect and care. And in the process, you can come up with a compact for excellence. That here inside the classroom, not only do we treat each other well, but we aspire for being the best, doing our best, and being the best student we can possibly be. Here are for, uh, com uh, sample compacts for excellence. To help everyone feel respected and cared about, we will. One, two, and three. And it came from the students, remember? You group them into four, and then they will report, and you will choose what are two or three things that we will promise, make a compact. And to help everyone do their best work, we will. And then you have this three. It works because that's how um, formation happens. Virtue is a habit. And this is what you're trying to make them do, to make it a habit, to make treating others well a habit, to make studying well and doing well in their work a habit. Behavior contracts have proved helpful with kids, especially with kids who bully, because you can include as one of those compacts, one of those promises, I will not hit or hurt anyone. If I do, I will have to call my parents and report what I did. That's what the class came up with as their compact. Okay. Sabi ni Dr. Michelle Borba, empathy is in a crisis. O nga naman, no? Empathy is developed when you deal with other human beings. You empathize. You feel for. But if the whole day, wala ka nang ginawa, kundi mag video game, hindi mo matututunan ng empathy. And that is what's happening among many kids today. Especially on a Saturday, or on a Sunday, or when there are no school, um, there are no classes, they can be spending the whole day just in front of the screen, the digital lifestyle. Therefore, as a, as a result of that, empathy is at its lowest. Michelle Borba, she's the last guest speaker I brought to the Philippines last May, to speak in uh, April, to speak to thousands of teachers spent 10 years traveling the world, interviewing schools, parents, teachers, how do you develop empathy? And she put everything, all those strategies, she put in a book entitled Unselfie. That's a book on empathy. And now we talk about, in that book, she talks about the nine empathy habits Unselfie, why empathetic kids succeed in our all-about-me world. So, here are the nine empathy habits according to Michelle Borba. Emotional literacy, moral identity, perspective-taking, moral imagination, self-regulation, practicing kindness, collaboration, moral courage, altruistic leadership. You want the students to have empathy, incorporate this in your academics, in your lessons, in your lesson planning, in your formation of the students. Well, very quickly, let's look at each one of them, one by one. The first habit of empathy, teaching emotional literacy to help students recognize and understand the feelings and needs of others. And you, panitikan teachers, literature teachers, reading teachers, are in the best position to do this because you read about characters and you make the students feel for the characters. That's developing emotional literacy. That's helping them develop empathy. Number two, moral identity. That's the second habit. Developing an ethical code. So students will adopt caring values that guide their integrity, 
and activity empathy to help others. And again, when you make them read books, novels, stories, you apply that in social studies, history, events in real life. They are able to develop moral identity. Third, perspective taking. One of the most important ways to develop empathy is to make them look at things from another perspective. Perspective taking. Empathetic children understand the need of others, the needs of others. Instilling perspective taking so students can step into other shoes to understand another's feelings, thoughts, and views. Like when you ask them, put yourself in the shoes of Jose Rizal um, at the time when he was in jail. That's perspective taking, making them feel for another person or any other character that you may be discussing in history. Fourth, moral imagination. That's why literature, reading, stories, that's a very powerful way of teaching empathy. Instilling a moral imagination so students can use literature, films, and emotionally charged image as a source of inspiration to feel with others. And it's not just about reading. You can also show them the pictures of the tragic flooding that happened in the province with hundreds dying. Show them that picture, that powerful picture to teach the kids. Uy, nagre ka dito about your slow Wi-Fi. And there are people there who don't even have electricity, who are hungry, who are dying because of the war going on, the floods, the uh, earthquake, the, those images are very powerful to trigger their moral imagination. Self-regulation. Mastering self-regulation to help students learn to manage strong emotions and reduce personal distress so that they can help others. Let me see. We still have... Okay, just a few more left because I will have to end by 4.45. We will do a bit of uh, closing uh, ceremony of sorts for our session today. Practicing kindness, that's exactly what I gave you as a strategy, celebrating Kindness Week because that's the sixth habit, developing and exercising compassion to increase students' concern about the welfare and feelings of others. Seventh, Collaboration. Harry Wong talks about making students do collaborative work. I don't know if I mentioned it here already. Not the group work scandal that we hear about in some schools where the teacher will make the students count one to five. All, group, all ones go to one group. All twos go to one group. Okay? The six of you, your work is to come up with this diorama. Group work. And then one week later, dadating yung group with a very beautiful diorama ni hindi mo alam kung sila bang gumawa nun o isa lang sa kanila ang gumawa nun. And then even worse, this is where the scandal comes in. All of you receive the same grade. Kasi madaling grade an yung ganun. That's a scandal. That's not collaborative work. That's in fact wrong. <laughs> collaborative work. I'm going to divide you into four. Why? Because one will report, one will do the PowerPoint, one will do the written report, and one will answer all the questions I ask. Ibig sabihin, you are grouped according to concrete tasks that each one will have to fulfill. That's collaborative work. And all of you are going to learn because the PowerPoint guy needs to know why he's putting that there. The one reporting should know what he's going to report. The one who's going to do the written report should know why that, the, that PowerPoint is like that. And the one answering the question should know everything about the lesson because she, he is the one, she is the one responsible for answering questions during the forum. So that's collaborative work and all of them are learning and all of them have specific tasks to do. Not the group work that is, as I said, Really, it's nothing else but a scandal 
same grade for all of them, even if only one did all the work, the one running for valedictorian, siya lang gumawa ng lahat. Ay hindi, yung driver niya ang gumawa nung diorama. <laughs> Kasi ni, hindi mo nakita kung sinong nagtabaho. Dumating na lang sa eskwelaan ang ganda-ganda ng trabaho. Hindi lang pinagawa sa recto, pinagawa pa sa gateway ko ba? Yung amin talaga <laughs> professional lang nagtabaho. Okay. Seventh habit, cultivating collaboration to active um, empathy and help students work with others to achieve shared goals for the benefit of all. Eighth, moral courage, make them see what it means to stand up, to stick out one's neck. Promoting moral courage to embolden kids to speak out, step in, and help others. And finally, number nine, altruistic leadership. That's empathy habit. Cultivating altruistic leadership abilities to motivate students to make a difference for others, no matter how small it may be, and become change makers. Okay, it's 4.42. I will have to... Um, let me see. We will have to skip a bit of this because... We are ready to end. Okay. I repeat what I said earlier, and I'm sincere about it. If so many strategies I've shared with you these three days, and you don't like any one of them, no problem. But don't go home without that clear idea in your mind. There are strategies to do our work better, more effectively, more efficiently. There are strategies so that we are not just covering the curriculum, but we are really raising young men and women to become the future leaders of this country that we badly need. That's why I mentioned to you, our seminar in the end is nothing else but an invitation to all of you. I've got to be the best teacher I can possibly be because my students need me. Because someday I'm going to account for it before God. And God will ask me, I gave you the opportunity to make a difference in the lives of so many people. Thousands of them. Not everyone on earth is given the opportunity to make an impact in the lives of so many people. How did you do? What did you do? Teaching is more than just an employment because we are dealing with human beings. I mean, think about it. Every single student who enters your classroom, who will enter your classroom, is a human being with body and soul. And we are, we have the opportunity to quote unquote meddle with the spirit, with the souls of people. Not too many professions are capable of doing that. And therefore, sometimes we come to a point where hanggang dito na lang talaga ang kaya ko. God, please help me because I, I really cannot do much uh, about this. I, I do my best, pero when the student goes home, I don't have any control over that anymore. I don't know if you have gone through an experience like that where you end up just praying, praying that that person that you reprimanded in class will come tomorrow a different man, I mean a different uh, person, um, resolved to, to do better as you want the person to change. And so that's what I really invite all of us to do, to choose to be the best teachers we can possibly be because the young people, the young people need us now more than ever. They count on us not just for science, English, and math, Many of them enter our classroom looking for answers to the big questions in life. And I can only wish you luck as you look forward to a new school year, new batch of students, new beginning, regardless of how we may have done, how we may have been in the past so many years that we've been inside the classroom. Those of you who may have just, especially the ones in uh, Zoom, who may have joined us only later on, you can download the three sets of PowerPoint presentations I used. And I encourage you to download the last one especially because there are many slides 
uh, towards the end that I didn't get to cover. But they can be very, very useful for you. And if you want to review some of the topics we took up, you can go to this YouTube channel. I'm waiting for our uh, team to make the recording of the um, sessions available. I will also make them available in this YouTube channel, aside from the more than 120 webinars that are available there, how to develop grit, resilience, and empathy, how to bullyproof your school. That one I showed you, the will of Dr. Thomas Licona, they say, three-hour lecture on that and I think that's available there that you can also use so you can access them in this YouTube channel once again I sincerely want to thank especially the president Mr. Marco Benitez for uh, giving space for Catalyst PDS for this series of um, hybrid seminars on character formation Good afternoon, everyone. So in behalf of the school, I would like to thank um, Dr. Manren Toy. It was a journey, a three-day journey, where all our, I think, heads are so filled with these strategies. And we opened the school year with a renewed hope and strength, putting in mind that we not only hope to become the best teachers, but I think a lot has been put into perspective. For me especially, like revising our day one took a great impact on me. And using teachers also as market marketing strategies where children should go home and be thankful that they are enrolled in the school. So these are some things that we will take with us to heart. And again, sir, we thank you for your generosity sharing with us all the books, all the slides, and everything else. So I will just read. So PWU awards this certificate of recognition to Mr. Emmanuel M. Rentoy for sharing his intellectual capital as resource speaker during the three-day workshop entitled Classroom Strategies, a Series to Create Outstanding learners, I think, on July 17 to 19, 2023, on-site and via Zoom. Given this 19th day of July, 2023, at the Conrado Benitez Hall, Philippine Women's University, City of Manila, signed Mrs. Remedios Cruz, our Executive Director, Dr. Felina Young, our Chancellor, and our University President, Marco M. Likewise, sir, we would like to share with you our book entitled Hers is the Girl, the Grave. Thank you so much. 